All right. Welcome. Uh, I'm Chris Peel. I'm chairing this session. We're happy to have Patrick Kofid Mogensen, who's a PhD student at the University of Copenhagen, talking about a LibM for Julia. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm talking about a LibM for Julia, and. Um, as you were just told, uh, my name is Patrick. Uh, I am not a programmer, as well. Yeah, that was like kind of the topic of yesterday's reception. Um, I'm a PhD student in economics at the University of uh, Copenhagen. And for some reason, I ended up doing this LibM stuff in, uh, in Julia. Um, that reason being um, uh, last year's Google Summer of Code. So before I get into the, the details of uh, what I did and what we have now in Julia and what we can do. Um, I want to say thank you to Google Summer of Code and Julia Computing for uh, providing the financial support that made it possible for me to spend time on um, doing this work. Uh, I especially want to thank also Simon Byrne, who was my mentor in Google Summer of Code, and I've also asked him a lot of questions afterwards, and he has uh, responded, answered. Um, but also Musem, Mustafa, I don't believe he's here, but um, Musem had, did some, had done some LibM work prior to my Google Summer of Code in Julia, and I've asked him a lot of questions as well, and he's also answered, so I'm very thankful for his time and knowledge. And uh, of, course, of course, all the reviewers on the pull requests, and you will see that uh, there can be a lot of uh, discussion back and forth when uh, doing stuff like this. So uh, the question is, what is stuff like this? So LibM is a term that uh, uh, <laughs> means that what we're dealing with here is a collection of functions to evaluate uh, mathematical functions, such as the sine, cosine, expon different e exponential functions and logarithms, uh, cube roots, and so on. So, Unfortunately, we need these functions to deal with angles in physics, and we need to construct log, -like, uh, log likelihood contributions um, when doing statistics. Uh, and we need to calculate these uh, weird things that our hardware cannot do, at least my computer can, can't. There are, there are hardware implementations of some of these functions, but um, generally they're uh, implemented in software, and we want them to be accurate, and we want them to be fast. <laughs> So there are different ways to make these uh, function evaluations more or less accu accurate, and you can gain speed by making them less accurate, but you can also pay some speed and make them more accurate. And uh, the stuff I have been working with and that you can find in Julia now is sort of, uh, uh, is quite accurate. It's not fully correctly rounded, but it, uh, it does give you some uh, speed improvements um, compared to the fully accurate uh, evaluation of these functions. Okay. So many of the algorithms that uh, we use to evaluate these mathematical functions on our computer uh, consist of uh, sort of the same types of steps. A lot of them, for, this is the cosine in blue and the sine in red. It, it's not that clear, but the cosine and sine, they're periodicals, so if you have some x and move it uh, to the right or to the left by some multiple of pi or pi halves or stuff like that, then you can uh, quite easily evaluate it if you know what the uh, function values of sine and the cosine is in some smaller interval, because you, just, you can just move along the x-axis uh, an appropriate number, uh, multiple of, of pi, for example. So a lot of these uh, functions can be evaluated by taking your, your input x and uh, doing what's called range reduction. So we move it to uh, a, smaller, a small interval but where we have a very precise local approximation to the function. And that approximation is typically done using polynomial approximation or a rational approximation. So that would be a polynomial divided by another pol polynomial. Um, so these are the types of algorithms that we typically use. Um, and uh, just to see why would we want to do a range reduction. So these are, if you don't count the ints, 
the, it, these are the smallest and largest uh, finite numbers in the float 32 uh, number type and float uh, 64. And so if you want to evaluate the sign, for example, from the lowest to the largest, then you need a very high order polynomial to fit that. Uh, um, that's not going to be a good idea. Um, so we want to reduce it to a range, a uh, smaller range, and then we want to use uh, polynomials or rationals um, because they can be evaluated quickly and accurately on our computer, on our computer um, using some uh, special um, algorithms for evaluating polynomials given the, the coefficients. Yeah, so, uh, so why, would, why would we do that in, in Julia? Why would that, that be particularly nice in Julia? Well, we have these different uh, functions and they're, for, for example, for float 32 and float uh, 64, uh, they will typically have the same overall algorithm, um, but with different uh, order polynomials or different specific uh, parts of the range reduction for different number types because we have to be more or less careful with precision. So it's very nice in Julia to be able to uh, write up the generic algorithm. I don't know if you can see this on the screen. Um, but for example, this is from base. To evaluate the sine function for the float 32 and float 64 uh, number types, we first check if we're already in the small range from, from uh, minus pi fourth to positive pi fourth. Uh, which is where we have our, um, our local approximation uh, calculated. And if it is, then we just return the, the value of our approximation. And if it's not, then we have to do some range reduction and then choose uh, an appropriate kernel. And in the C code that this is uh, ported from, this is different, two different functions with all the stuff in there, but in Julia it's much easier to just write like the generic algorithms, algorithm for how we want to evaluate the sign and then we use this patch to choose the appropriate kernels and the appropriate uh, range reduction kernel and the appropriate coefficients for the polynomials and order of the polynomials and stuff like that. So it's quite nice to, to do it in Julia this way. Um, you can like, you can just <laughs> put up the intent and then all the details can be uh, retrieved using multiple dispatch. Okay, so before I started working on this last year, we were fully dependent, besides the functions that uh, Musim had done and some others, uh, on a library called OpenLibM that uh, was made for Julia. That is basically some other li LibMs uh, that were collected, uh, originally FDLibM from the, at least the version that we're using, uh, originates from the beginning of the 90s. But then if you go into the OpenLibM repository, you'll see that there are all different things that we need to be careful when we're um, compiling this on different uh, architectures and patches for different things because, uh, yeah, when we ship OpenLibM, we have to make sure that it can compile on all these different platforms. Um, but uh, now most of these functions are written in Julia and are in base and that for me, the libm implementer, that makes it a lot easier to distribute because as long as Julia compiles, then these functions will compile also and run on your uh, computer. So this is sort of um, abstracted away from, from that layer. And then, yeah, so that's pretty nice. Was that a, sorry, can I see this? Oh yeah. Uh, so of course, if you're taking some battle-tested code and you want to port it to Julia, you have to be very careful that you didn't introduce any uh, bugs of different kinds. So in all these pull requests, you will see verification of accuracy. Base benchmarks is full of uh, libm benchmarks now. They're like literally testing all the different branches that you can go through. And we also have now testing of these functions as part of base sys testings. Um, but getting these things merged can, can t oh, okay. What do you test with base? Um, big float uh, evaluations. Um, so it can take a bit of time. I mean, this is the first pull request that I did during Google Summer of Code. It ended up having almost 150 com comments and it didn't get merged until after Google Summer of Code. <laughs> so that was the first pull request. <laughs> uh, but th and this is just the range reduction for the trigonometric functions. So, uh, 
And oh, okay. And this is, uh, yeah, this is, I mean, this is uh, oh, some of all the benchmarks that are now based benchmarks. So this is just for the sign function, just to make sure that we didn't regress against this great uh, C code. Um, yeah, but they pay off. Um, so what this meant was that we could stop building and shipping OpenSpecFun, which is another library written in C that has had to be built and blah, 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 blah. So, yeah. It's quite nice. We like to keep things in Julia, right? And, and this proves that we can actually do it. So there's an open issue that shows what, what functions that we're missing. And um, it's not a lot, really, because I have L gamma on my computer and gamma as well and rem as well. I don't think I have mod f, but, uh, and I have some open pull requests as well. So we're not that far off, but we didn't make it into 1.0. But yeah, as you saw, it can take some time to agree on the, that the port is up to standard. Yeah. So what else? Uh, the future, in the future, we could use a lot of tricks using uh, fused uh, uh, FMAs, uh, so specific uh, operations on the CPU to, for example, we can make the range reduction and the trigonometric functions much faster in the much, uh, most used cases. And if, if you don't want to accept the trade-off that was in FD libm, you can use stuff like CRLibm instead, that is correctly rounded libm. Uh, it might be a bit slower, not that much slower, but you can use it, and you can use it for interval arithmetic packages. Um, and if you don't care about the full range, so I said it went from very small numbers to very big numbers, things like sleeve, uh, which is a port by uh, MUSEM, can evaluate things a bit faster, but may not have the full accuracy on the full domain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, a couple quick questions. <laughs> so can you do CR LibM and Julia now? I mean, can you just <laughs> just make just make your code correctly rounded? We we could do it and uh uh is Jeffrey here? He just did some uh, of the um, what's it called, uh, extended precision arithmetic. He has a package for that, I believe, and that is basically what is needed to implement that. But, uh, but, but I mean, they're all explained in the manual for CLLVM. It's very explicit what they do, so we could do it in, uh, in Julia, yeah. So don't think you're getting all that computer movement to make sure it's just right. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, do you check also the speed? Of computations yeah. because the in some applications, especially dynamics, speed of computing a sine or a cosine is actually critical. Yeah. So I didn't hear the the actual question. So uh, do you check also the speed uh, when you benchmarking? If I measure the speed or yes, uh, compared to C libraries. Sure. Yeah. So that was quite important that it didn't get slower from porting it from C to Julia, and uh, the, the PRs that were merged wouldn't have been merged if there were regressions there. So some of the open ones have some weird regressions that are, we're trying to iron out, um, but so far it has been possible to port it without uh, any performance regressions. Uh, but as I said, uh, Sleeve is, takes a different approach um, where you don't care too much about like the full precision on the full range, but on a normal range where we, you would actually calculate these functions, it's, it's accurate enough, yeah. Okay, let's, let's thank Patrick. <laughs>